Hi, I'm Peter Nixon, and I'm a friend of Chow Kei. I'm a friend of Yoga Up, and I'm the one who you sometimes see in the back on the mat in the corner, realizing I'm so dramatically unable to do these moves in yoga that uh, I look like a beginner. But I'm not really a beginner, and the story I wanted to share with you today is uh, my journey back to the mat. Uh, where I recognize I should have stayed a long time ago when I first encountered yoga. Uh, ten, ten steps back to the mat. The, the, uh, the story of my career goes back to Canada, where I was an accountant. I wanted to learn how to uh, figure out what made good companies excel. And so I jumped on the international bandwagon. I moved to Switzerland and then I moved to Hong Kong. And then I left behind my work as a chartered accountant to specialize in leadership development. And it was the work in leadership development that taught me that different people can do the same thing at the same time, but for different motivations. For example, some of us are very motivated by achieving results. Others are very motivated by uh, great relationships. And uh, another group of us are very motivated by the rationale. So results, relationships, rationale. And although normally we're motivated by all three of those things, one of them stands above the others. For example, I love uh, ideas. And if I can study and find the right ideas, then I'm really motivated. Uh, but we also change as we get uh, stressed and uh, we change in predictable ways. So for example, I'm very motivated by achieving results, but as stress escalates or conflict escalates or the intensity of life and work escalates, I move towards results. So I, it's not the ideas for ideas sake, it's the ideas to achieve results that really motivates me. And uh, so that study of motivation and how it, how you, people's motivations change as stress escalates uh, became very important part of my work as a negotiator and uh, conflict resolution. So the work that I've been doing in conflict resolution and negotiation led me to understand that uh, over time, as we became more connected uh, to our digital gadgets, we became less and less connected to the people around us and that led to what I call dialogue gap, our inability to actually just talk to each other, to sit down and talk to each other. I uh, authored a book called Dialogue Gap, and the book went viral, and I started traveling all over the world talking about Dialogue Gap and helping companies figure out how to en engage employees and uh, bring back that innovative spirit, teamwork, it back into their organizations. As I did this, I found that uh, the skills of dialogue had been uh, diminishing. That for some reason, I guess just out of uh, lack of practice, our basic dialogue skills were diminishing. And the dialogue skills that I referred to and are mentioned in my book are easy to remember. Uh, some are related to presence. We need to be very present and mindful as we are on the mat when we're uh, meditating or uh, breathing properly in yoga. We need to be respectful of people around us and the environment. And if we're respectful, people will talk. And if they detect any lack of respect, they won't talk. We need to express ourselves and, and learn to express ourselves even in a culture where Perhaps we feel uncomfortable expressing some of the difficult emotions or incomplete thoughts that we might be having. We need to be able to suspend our egos and our uh, beliefs uh, because we need to create a space for ourselves to listen and hear what other people have to say. We may think we know what they're gonna say and we may be completely blown away and learn new things. So we need to create that space by suspending the assumptions and beliefs and egos that are preventing us from opening up and hearing those things in a new way from the people around us. And the final of the five sets of dialogue skills is 
we need to be much better at listening and absorbing the messages of the people around us. Something that I think actually comes uh, from being very much, I mean, just think at the end of your session in yoga, how much more in tune you are with everything around you compared to when you first arrive and you get set up and you're waiting for the class to begin. You know, everything's rushing through your head. And at the end, you're uh, completely peaceful. That's uh, part of the skill of good dialogue leaders. Then, as I uh, consulted to clients that were having very difficult dialogues, and you know everything from family businesses to relationship breakdowns to team crisis to big issues like uh, conflicts in the Middle East, Israel, Palestine, Iran, U.S., Tibet, China. I've had all sorts of very interesting dialogues all over the world. I realized that uh, one of the most challenging things that uh, was having people's uh, problems was their own managing of negative emotions. If we cannot manage our own negative emotions, like during this pandemic, when we get worried and anxious, we're not very effective as leaders. Those negative emotions shut down our ability to dialogue. And instead, we erupt in silence or violence, or uh, we regret the things we say, or we regret not having said things we should have said. And, and that's causing problems. And we just hear about all of the problems that people are having and the lockdown and work from home and homeschooling. You know, you're, you're living with your loved ones and you get to a point where you don't want to live with your loved ones anymore. So that's obviously something's wrong. And the more I help people kind of identify these negative emotions and start to eliminate these negative emotions, the more it led me to wanting to figure out exactly, you know, what is it that Buddha and Buddhism learned and Hindu uh, yogis learned 2,500 years ago that we need to know now. And there's obviously a lot of research there. And so that became, for me, one of the greatest uh, uh, chests of information to open up a resource banks to open up and figure out. And if I go back many, many years, uh, my father, at, when I was at college, he sent me a note and he said, Peter, learn to control your emotions to enhance your situation rather than hinder it. And I thought, oh, that's great. I'm a 17-year-old boy and my emotions are out of control, right? You see a pretty girl, your emotions go out of control. Your, one of your guy friends angers you and you want to fight. Uh, your professor tells you something stupid and you just want to uh, say he's stupid. <laughs> you know, your emotions out of control. So I spent the next 40 years trying to figure out, well, how do I do that? And uh, fortunately, I didn't have to look very far. I just had to really settle down and look. And these solutions are there. And it was in this study, especially of uh, meditation, that uh, brought me back to my breath. And that brought me back to yoga, which I had studied, actually, uh, back in college and got credit for a couple of classes in yoga. Uh, and then all of these years later, uh, I told Chow Kei, you really should have a men's class because we don't feel comfortable sitting in a room with people who, uh, typically women who are incredibly good at yoga and men like me feel like we need it, but we feel terribly ashamed at how bad we are. And, uh, and then she kindly launched the men's class, which got me started. And all we needed was a little start, a little boost. It was really more confidence than anything else. It was learning what's a block, how do you hold the mat, how do you, what's a savasana, the basic stuff, which, you know, unless you learn, you don't know. So that brought me back. Uh, and that, that interest, the global interest, really, in mindfulness at the same time, and the explosion and curiosity in yoga brought me back to uh, the mat. And that brought me back to yoga up. 
so if there's any sense to my story, that's kind of 10 very clear steps or stones across the river uh, that brought me back. And I appreciate the chance to share. And I'll pause now so that uh, any of you who have questions on any of those steps along the way or any of the uh, related topics, I'd be more than happy to share. <laughs>